Can we go first? Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, it was it is a normal super late shift for the sort of nighttime economy. It was a, quite a normal night, wasn't it? Yeah. Th- there wasn't anything particularly worrying going on. We were monitoring the pubs. And then we sort of went for a drive early hours of the morning just to check everything was okay. I saw a, um, a small blue hatchback car and I was driving at the time and, and you were passenger, weren't you? And it had gone flying past us at, at quite a rate that if anyone had been stumbling home drunk, you'd think something could potentially go quite wrong. And it went flying over the roundabout and I thought, this is it, I'm going to chase it now. Uh, on my blues to try and catch up with it and we we pulled it over it pulled over and before we'd even got out this male had got out we just want to check the 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 why are you pulling me over because why are you pulling me over why it got out much quicker than anyone really usually gets out of car when they've been pulled over and then we went up to him tried to speak to him I told him he was speeding, he didn't like that fact, said he wasn't speeding, I said he was, we had that back and forth for a while. Excess oh, speed, what do you mean, excess it? speed? No f***ing wasn't. And he, he just came stomping towards us, didn't he, and then we weren't quite expecting it, we were just going to give him some words of advice about speeding, run him through, check everything was okay, Which run the car did, through. We did run him through, and it came back that the car was only insured to a female. Uh, and that's typically what we, we'd usually do, that, that is our job, you know. And there was actually still cars coming the other way um, and we had to sort of tuck in. Because on a country road there was no, no path, no pavement, it was literally road, bush, bush. Yeah, no, side. no lighting, no nothing, so it was pitch black, the only lights we had were from the car. Yeah, and we kept our blue lights on, which I think helped us in the long run with yeah. people finding us. but. Um, so we're in the back end of nowhere. Don't come out of the road. Don't take the f- Now I'm speaking to him. He's our responsibility, isn't he? Yeah. So if he gets hit, that's on us. So we have to almost weirdly, even though he's hurling this abuse at us, look after him as well. And then he goes back to the car. He's left the car door open, the driver's side. He slams the car door, turns around. And I go flying backwards. And that bit is a little bit blurry to me. Yeah, so from my point of view, I tried to update control on the road that we was on. Um, so I ran back to the car to see on the sat nav what road we were on, and as I turn around, he swung a punch. Mm. And then that's when I've ran over and speared him up the car. Don't touch me! Punch me! Do you want Ted put you? No, I don't want you to head put me. When we say spear, we mean like um, restrain him against the car, basically. Uh, so you've sort of got your hand, your arm, your forearm across his chest, yeah. trying to keep him against the car, because that's probably our best tactic at the minute. He was so strong, um, which we sort of later found out as, as this went on and on. The only thing he was bothered about the whole time was that he wasn't speeding. Yeah. That was I all he speeding. kept saying, I wasn't speeding, I wasn't speeding. Yeah. We stopped Trevor because you're driving excess speed. No, I won't. Why don't? No, I won't. Which at this point seems very minor. Or rest- having to restrain him and, and reason with him and, you know, tell him to calm down. And that's all we were saying calm down, calm down. Look, just relax. All we wanted to do was talk to you. And by this point, I'd reached over and pressed my uh, emergency assistance button. And I think because it had been a relatively okay night yeah that came as quite a shock to everyone because it, it sends sort of when when you hear that alarm it goes through your head it goes through your body you're like suddenly panic mode you get into that scene you need to help your colleague so i can imagine it was quite a shock we know we've got people on the way however we're then speaking to the fella and we're trying to get him in handcuffs to the rear and this proves more than difficult put your arms on your back please He was so up and down that there was a moment of compliance and I thought, oh, okay, we'll resolve this now. And then there wasn't compliance. He swung his arm about and I'd got one cuff on 
and not managed to get the other. He sort of erupted, didn't he? Yeah, because we, we were still trying funny. to move him out of the road because obviously we were still in the road at this point. And then I can't even remember what happened. I just know that all three of us ended up in the bush. Oh, no. Who's just making one of those times where you like, I'd rather wait this out and have him sit on me for the whole time than him get up because he's on top of me and start hitting us or running yeah. away or anything. So it was just a waiting game, waiting for the other unit. I can ruin your life right Stop. now. Stop. I've asked you to put your hands behind your back, okay? How long is your colleagues going to turn up for? I could have done anything to you right now. It's a good job I'm picked. At different points, he's he is swinging for us and like elbowing us and yeah. kicking us and trying to hit out and punch us. Get on the floor now! Are you talking to Now! He's pushing my head into the ground at different points, going, uh, and he said to me, there's one thing that really stuck out. And he said, don't talk to me like that. And the funny thing is, throughout the whole thing, we're going, calm down. And it didn't work, obviously. <laughs> he uh, swung a punch at some point at me. Yeah. And yeah. then I had a mark that's scarred now on my face from the handcuff. Yeah, because obviously the one handcuff's still on, so it caught you, yeah. didn't it? Eventually, we got him onto this grass verge, and I managed to get my spray out, and then I, I said, I'm going to spray you if you don't calm down. And I've sprayed him in the face, and I've... Accidentally caught you in the fire because there was no other option. Spray, yeah. spray, 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 <laughs> spray, calm down. Which we couldn't have even done before no, either. No. Because it was one of those where if I pull my baton out or pull my parver out because he's above us and he's got the advantage, it just wasn't worth the risk. And he was saying this and he was saying this throughout, wasn't he? He was saying, God, your colleagues are taking a long time. How long are they going to take? I could have done anything to you by now. Yeah. Um, and he was doing stuff to us. And I think in my head, I thought, how am I getting out of this? Yeah. Am I going home? Um, and I think that's the tricky part. I think you sort of think, where are people? And you're desperate for people to come and help you. And we managed to get the handcuffs on properly behind his back. So and he was still like resisting on the floor. He was still resisting, still trying to get himself off. And I actually arrested him. And once we'd got him in the cuffs, I, I arrested him fully. I'm arresting you for assault, police. No. Okay. No. no. I'm driving under the influence of alcohol. You're not getting away. You do not have to say anything. You're not getting away. You do not mention one question. You're not so getting away. Don't you spit. You anything you do say, maybe give that me that evidence. Answer, she never think so. Okay. Uh -huh. um, and I'm surprised I imagined I even got that out. Yeah. Uh, the words out of my mouth. I was exhausted. It's instinct, isn't it? Because he even got given aftercare after he'd been yeah. harvard. And the spray does sting. It does. And, you know, I think the, the right process is to tell people to keep blinking and, and give them the aftercare. Uh, the dog eventually turned up, the dog handler, uh, and he didn't care about the dog. He said, let the dog bite me. He didn't care. Why, let the dog bite me, you <laughs> zippy <laughs> It was just a sign of relief, I think. Yeah, that we can hear blues. They are close, you know. Someone's here. And by this point, I'm exhausted, you're exhausted. I think one thing that helped though, because obviously we can't communicate with control and our colleagues while it's going on, we had passer buyers um, that were travelling on the same road that stopped and they'd phoned the police themselves to say there's officers fighting. Yeah. Um, with a mail that they've pulled over, this is the road, this is where they are, so that helped. Yeah, and who, whoever that female was, I think, uh, you know, you don't always have to get out and help, we don't expect you to because I don't want anyone else getting hurt. No. That, did us wonders being in the middle of nowhere that did us wonders and then we went back yeah and done all the paperwork. but the sergeants turned up to the scene and checked that we was all okay and everything i think it hit me when we got back to the nick because i'd been parvered mm. my, my face was on fire the the rain was reactivating it so once that calmed down we've gone back to the nick and then like starting to process it all and then as we walked in there's a mirror on the left and i looked at myself and i had a massive cut on my face yeah and I was like, right, OK. We had mud all over us, yeah. thorns stuck in our legs. Our hair was a mess. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, we can, you know, almost make light of it now um, because you have to. You've got to keep doing this job and you've got to make light of it um, to carry on. And that is the only way to carry on. 
Um, but I think our colleagues were really supportive as well. But yeah, it felt like a long night, didn't it? Yeah, because we was on overtime the day after as well, weren't we? Yeah, so we came back So we'd work. put in for overtime the next day, and they'd said to us, if you don't yeah. want to come in because you've been assaulted, you don't have to. Um, which was quite nice, but we were like, no, it's fine, Like, we'll, we'll come in. But after it, I think we, we realised the extent of we, the injuries, like we were both really aching. Yeah. Um, I think I probably got the brunt of it. Yeah, I had to have physio for a bit, physio sessions uh, for my upper back, because I'd like, I don't know what I'd done to it, but I had to have some physio sessions. I ended up going to the hospital and getting x-rays on the shoulders and elbow. Yeah. Um, and it was a possible fractured elbow, which turned out to just be a really bad sprain. Yeah. Your face was just scarred for a while, wasn't it wasn't, I yeah. mean, like scabbing. And then I had to go to the doctor and get the thorns pulled out of my leg by a doctor. Yeah. Ouch. Yeah, that, that really hurt, and some antibiotic cream for those. And then we had a, a psychological debrief, didn't we? Yep. Our health and wellbeing team almost lead it, and we have um, people that are trained to lead that psychological debrief. And it's basically what we're doing now. It's, it's sort of giving an account of what happened, how we felt about it, but it's with our other colleagues that were on the other end of it as well. Uh, and the dog handler came and that was, I think we were a bit worried about that, but actually yeah. it was okay. Yeah. Um, I think it quite helped. Yeah, I think so. It, I think it's good to, to talk about it. You've had quite a few assaults, haven't you? Yeah, and since I've been kicked, headbutted and spat out, so. Yeah, I would probably argue in general, I think you, you see the sort of stats from the other forces as well, as well as ours, and I do think officer assaults has gone up. Take that incident that we were in. That guy would have got uh, a fine. He might have got nicked then for the drink drive, absolutely. But in the first instance, what we were thinking pulling him over is you're going to end up killing someone here by driving that fast on these country roads. It'll be someone walking home from the pub, or it'll be, like someone I said, someone... walking their dog or anything. Someone walking their dog or someone travelling the other way, because that country road wasn't big. You're going to end up killing yourself or someone else. Pulling him over was to protect him and protect everyone else. There was no need for that to happen afterwards. <laughs> I think when you get uh, assaulted, you replay it quite a lot in your head. Uh, you go over it and over it and over it and over it. What could I have done different? How could have this been prevented? Uh, could I have stopped it? Could I have protected my colleague more? And you go over and over and over. Uh, and I think, uh, I don't know about you, but I felt guilty because obviously you'd come out with a cut. So I felt guilty because um, your precious face had got uh, scarred um, and that stuck around for quite a while. I had trouble sleeping and I, I, I typically, I, I, you know, I have to go visit my family. I think you, you live with your family, don't you? But so there's a lot of time, thinking time on your own. Um, and then when you do talk to your family, I had a bit of a, I don't know whether to tell my mum or not. Because my mum worries, I think my dad also worries, but he likes to put a bit of a tough front on and he does worry. Because you don't want them to be like, I want you to stop doing the job. Because you don't want to stop doing the job, because I like the job, for the most part. Mm. I love the job, I love helping people. But when you have that conversation with your family, they're like, I wish you didn't do this job. I go home. And me walking in the door wakes my mum up. Yeah. And I was like, if I don't tell her before I leave work and she comes downstairs and sees me in the state that I'm in, she's going to be like, you're not going back to work tomorrow. Yeah. So it was a bit of a difficult one. I had to bite the bullet and sort of text her first and say, an incident's happened at work. I'm yeah. a little bit injured, but I'm fine. I'll talk to you about it when I get home. I think the community would feel different about it if it was one of their family members. Yeah. That was in the police and had to go through everything that every single police officer's been through. I think they'd understand more of what the job's actually about. I think when it gets to the point that press are reporting it, it's difficult with press because 
there's parts of the story missing and you're not going to have the full story with, with the press there's going to be certain parts put in there and and people will watch that and come and, and be like oh the police are the villains but if they'd have got the whole story yeah sort of I, I don't think it gets portrayed very well in the bigger press so people jump to conclusions very quickly uh, from a headline or not reading the article properly and all I would say is you know do your research do your research see what's out there and actually read stuff properly because a lot of people read one line and then they jump to oh that's what's happened oh this is my opinion based off that one line yeah and I think really people need to be more informed I think you know we're all people at the end of the day and we all have people that care about us and we want to go home to those people uh, yeah I, we want to live our lives you want to go see Taylor Swift don't you <laughs> so um, we don't want to be beaten up and bruised like we take this uniform off and we're normal people like everyone else yeah so we, you know we just want to we just want to make it home really